Hey, Johnny B here. I'm about to review Garbage Pail Kids from 1987. If you wanna see more like this, hit that subscribe button so that you never even miss a single thing of this. And hi, also. Hey everybody, it's me, I'm Johnny. Remember me from before, or never before, if you're new? So I'm working on this different video about the things I collected as a kid growing up, and Garbage Pail Kids came up. So, I remembered, Hey, you do stuff about movies on your thing? Maybe you should do a thing about that movie. I gotta start watching some better movies, because I watched the Garbage Pail Kids movie from 1987. Movie sucked. It's rated PG. PG, so it was the 80s. Everyone was on cocaine. Oh, for those of you who don't know what Garbage Pail Kids are, there were these trading cards that were really popular in the 80s. Like a, an answer to Cabbage Patch Kids, but gross. Like everything about them was gross. That's their whole deal is that they're gross. Gross fucking babies. So the movie starts off and it's this garbage can just hurling through space. Very epic. Think uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. But gross. I actually really liked the way that they did the credits on this. The score fucking sucked. Nothing interesting about the music that was playing during this opening credits. An origin story for the Garbage Pail Kids right off the bat. We know that they're somehow space related. So there's some stuff going on in this antique shop and I'm not quite sure right at the beginning if if this place is haunted, if it's magic, if it's all the Garbage Pail Kids. It's probably all the Garbage Pail Kids there. Garbage Pail Kids. Really, that's the worst possible place for a Garbage Pail Kid is in an antique shop. A regular kid's not welcome there, let alone a Garbage Pail Kid. The the can starts shaking or something, and all of a sudden this dude comes running in and puts a diving helmet on top of the trash can and makes sure that these garbage pail kids can't get out, and... This should keep a lid on things for the rest of the night. Nobody puts garbage pail babies in a corner. It's not even foul fill. The introduction to our human characters. You know, those beloved human characters that they put in a world of other characters so that we have a, a bridge between reality and the fantasy world of garbage pails. He's getting bullied. He's, he's running from some large-breasted woman, her gay friend, and, and the guy from Stranger Things. If it's an 80s movie and you're wondering if it's a bad guy, look at their gloves. Okay, creep. But if they don't have fingers on them, they're definitely bad guys. Uh, so they're, I don't know, they take the kid's money and apparently he owes them. I don't have any money. If he ain't got money, he ain't got nothing. They throw him in some water that goes underneath a bridge. Oh, no, no, no! Oh. So, I don't know what the bridge is crossing because it's literally only a puddle. Those are my kind of guys. Real psychos. So this kid, Dodger, walks into the, he, he goes into the antique shop and apparently this kid hangs out there a lot and he's friends with the owner who's some magic guy named Captain Manzini. I don't know what the obsession was in the 80s with pairing up a young boy with an old man. And I'm gonna need you to put him way up inside your butthole, Morty. In my butt. Put him way up inside there as far as they can fit. Like, Rick and Morty is an obvious parody of this, but I just don't get it. Where's that come from? Who wanted that? Oh, good Lord. Last thing I wanted to do as a 14 year old was go hang out with some old dude. Go swimming with them in the locker room. They probably don't even wear a towel. Just That's what I want. letting it hang out. Like no ball shaming, but those things are long. Some long balls. You smell like a fire hydrant. I had an accident. And I don't know what a fire hydrant smells like. I, I used to rebuild fire hydrants, and I, I still, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. They don't have a distinct smell. If your fire hydrant has a distinct smell, you might want to contact your local place where they, you know, water department stuff. We better clean you up before the flies get to you. So the kid's got to change out of his dirty clothes, and Captain Manzini gives him a dashiki, and 
I, while I was watching this, I was wondering, are, is this kid gonna? Yeah, he's 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 wearing a dashiki. And some damn fool invented gunpowder, and a bigger damn fool split the atom. It's like he's a member of the Democratic Party in 2021. Kid asked, what's in the garbage pail? Have I ever forbidden you to touch any of my treasures? And now Captain Manzini's got to explain to him that this garbage can's like the Pandora's box. If you open it up, you're going to get an illusion that tells you about things that, you know, cause evils. So I, I guess the kid works there. We're getting a little bit more info. He works there and he's dusting some shit. I don't know. But... He's doing something. He does a lot in this movie. That's pretty cool. Staring at her through the window. He doesn't. She doesn't know he's watching, and she's bent over looking at the thing in the window display, and he's just staring. But then, Juice, the guy from earlier, you touch my woman, creep. Dodger shows us that he's skilled in Shaq Fu and starts trying to basketball them to death. <laughs> Because apparently he, he can basketball at them. Yeah, I, I used basketball as a verb to indicate him using a basketball against them. Anyway, the obviously he's a little twerp and they're 80s gangsters with the big boobed lady. <laughs> and they keep shoving this kid's face in these boobs over and over again. It's really... I don't like it. This is awful. He's 14, this kid, and I don't know how old these gangsters are. I think they're adults. I'm pretty sure they're adults. <laughs> oh, fuck! They knocked over the garbage pail. Yeah, like an elephant blues nose. Where's Captain Manzini? Like, you're a magic dude, and the kid who works for you is getting bullied by these people who are... Maybe he shouldn't be left alone in this place with a, with all this magic that's clearly dangerous. He compared it to Pandora's box. But anyway, the street toughs take him down into the sewer, which... It's not that easy to get into the sewer. Most manhole covers are, like, really heavy. Like, really heavy. You have to use a pry bar to get them up. I don't think I can watch anything that has sewer in it ever because no representation that I've seen of sewer on any movie ever has been accurate. So I used to work in the sewer department. It's just the manhole that you see is just usually two spots on the sides and then a trench cut through the center. Like six inches is usually what they are. So after gay net shirt guy kicks him in the face. What are you going to do? Him and the guy from Stranger Things start trying to open this valve because apparently their plan is to drown him in sewage. And they can't get it because they're just not strong enough. So Big Boobs comes over and... breaks open the, the damn valve, and now there's City Zoo sewer. City Zooer. City Zooer is just filling up around this kid, and he's laying in a pile of, in a puddle of sewage, and they leave him. They leave him. They, so he, this is murder. They are murdering this child. Okay, down in the sewer, the, the air oxygen levels can get really dangerous. There's a chemical called H2S, hydrogen 2 sulfide, or something like that. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a person who worked in the sewer. But this chemical builds up in sewer and it can kill you pretty damn fast. So don't go into the sewer ever. It's it's probably filled with H2S. Oh, if you, uh, it smells like sulfur, like a rotten egg smell. So if there's like a manhole in front of your house and it's starting to smell really bad like rotten eggs, call the sewer department, they'll come clean it probably. Or there's a problem, but that H2S, whatever. I, I talk about sewer way too much. See you later, creep. So they leave him and call him a creep. I don't know, 80s people, that's all they can, that's the biggest insult that you can think of as a creep. 
and the Garbage Pail Kids show up. Or at least we don't know it's the Garbage Pail Kids yet. We can assume because we're not idiots. Hey, guys, turn off the water. So the Garbage Pail Kids show up and they save him and take him back to the antique shop and, and we get our introduction to these characters. So the kid asks, what are you? What are you? What are you? Same to you, buddy. Yeah. I mean, you look, you're clearly from another planet. Your, your garbage can's a spaceship, so I think it's okay to ask what you are if you're an alien and you look like... I do like to get stumped. But Captain Manzini's telling the Garbage Pail Kids to get back in the pail, and Alligator said, the Garbage Pail. Oh, that's no way! Uh-uh, that pail be jail. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's, that's how he talks. It rhymes the whole thing. It's real annoying. Like, they're not clever rhymes. It's just, that pail be jail. No, that's poison. Hey, drink the red and you'll get dead. Um, we meet Messy Tessie, and I don't, I don't think you should shake hands with her. It's Tessie. Hi. Don't shake hands with Messy Tessie. She's just snot. I, man, why did I choose to watch this movie? I don't, I don't like snot. It's not my favorite. Captain Manzini mentions like, oh, you really stink. He just says, okay, let's give you a bath, and so the kid takes a bath right there in the middle of the antique store, and I really hope that this guy's his dad because if. Manzini's not his dad. He's, I don't know, he's crossing some boundaries don't here. Don't even think about it. Oh, oh. <laughs> but then I also wonder, why is every single one of the Garbage Pail Kids there for the bath? Alligators even trying to eat his toes, which is another running gag throughout the entire thing. Man, I'm in for it. <sighs> then we learn that normies are somebody that the Garbage Pail Kids need to fear because they're ugly and people don't like... Normies or normal people don't like ugly things like the Garbage Pail Kids. So... Since you won't go back into the pail, you must at least promise me that you will stay away from the normies. What are normies? Normies? They're normal people. We got to hide from them. They hate us. Yeah, they It's especially ugly. bad that they came to Earth in the 80s when everyone is really obsessed with their image. That's all they cared about in the image. It was cocaine and image. You couldn't have chosen a worse time to come back. People are absolutely obsessed with their looks these days. Dieting, jogging, having everything lifted, including their wallets. So the kid spies on this girl through a window again. And I gotta say, 80s hair was fucking ridiculous. That stuff sucked. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that we changed a little bit of that. Her name's Tangerine. She makes clothes and gets stared at by a Dodger through windows. She's the girlfriend of, of Juice. So she's on her way to the nightclub where she's gonna sell clothes because that's where you sell clothes is at a nightclub. And she takes this 14-year-old with her, and she's selling so many clothes that her cigar box is completely full of money. And and one girl even asks to buy her shirt, so she takes the shirt right off of her back and sells it to this person. Because it's the 80s, and we care if there's three things that we care about in the 80s. It's cocaine, how you look, and money. Uh, but when she takes off her shirt to sell it, the kid, like, stares at her for a very long time. With, like... A look. Oh no! Juice showed up! So he's gotta hide. Dodger, he's gotta hide. And the best place he can think of to hide is he steals that gym bag out of the back seat of her car. He climbs in it and zips it up so that he doesn't get seen by the by the gangsters, by the street toughs. So we see the garbage pail kids and they're walking around in the street looking in the garbage cans, and we can tell from context clues that they're looking for other garbage pail kids that are lost there. We may never find our friends again. We tried, now let's eat. And apparently a bunch of their friends had gotten, had been there already, and that's the, gonna be our premise. That's gonna be what's going forward. That's our MacGuffin. 
We need to find the other garbage pail kids. The ones who are not in this little group. But while they're out, they, they get into all sorts of mischief and they steal one guy's pants. And he has the hard underwear, which is hilarious, according to every kid's movie in the 80s. They steal a, a truck, but it's, it wasn't a monster truck. It was just a delivery truck. How you doing down there? Hey, it's dark down here. No, not the brake. The gas, the gas. Well, they flatten some car. What the heck was that? Get some uh, product placement because if there's four things that we care about in the 80s, it's cocaine, how we look, uh, product placement, and money. Hey, we're the Pepsi generation. Oh, but the Garbage Pail Kids made Dodger a present. They made him this really cool coat so that he could impress that girl he likes. Chick, see she's into fashion. So he puts on this super 80s looking jacket. And he moonwalks over to her house to stare at her through her window, and then he just walks right in. Fucking little creep. Maybe Juice is right. Maybe, maybe they should have left him in that sewer. No, murder's not okay, especially to a kid. Even if it's a shitty kid. Don't murder him. She really likes his coat. Wow. Where did you get those clothes? That is some coat. So it's a good thing that the kids made it for him. I, I made it. What? Well, she starts getting super 80s and starts flashing dollar signs in her eyes and... You know, that jacket makes you look, uh, older. I'm much older. Oh, at least 16. Maybe 17. And says, okay, you need to get me 12 by next Friday. Then we're getting into a sweatshop situation where, where Dodger is taking advantage of these, these ugly kids that are just looking for their ugly kid friends so they could give them their garbage can and go back to space. But this kid's making them make clothes for us normies. Well, look, I could try. You could try. You could try. Well, why don't you go try right now? They don't want to do it. That's not fair. And we only have one sewing machine. How are we going to do that? Obviously, you're an amateur. And they, they tell them they'll think about it. We'll tell you over breakfast. Overnight? They go to a non-union sweatshop. We know it's a non-union sweatshop because it has a sign that says non-union sweatshop. There's a whole musical. Like, the, the Garbage Pail Kids sing this full-on, a full song. And I did not remember that it was a uh, musical in any way. And it's one of the worst songs. Easiest fucking thing. Like, kids who were fans of Garbage Pail Kids would not have liked this song. They would have made it go back in the can. So come on, guys, no, it ain't smart. We'll borrow tools to do our part. We can't do anything by working with each other. So it's weird to me that they're so good at making clothes so that us normies would love because their whole thing is that they're ugly and everything they do is gross and ugly. So. Why would us normies like the clothes that they make so much? Why would they be in such high demand? That There's a little bit of a, it doesn't make sense to me. Unless it's about capitalism and it's us taking advantage of whatever it is, even if we don't like it. We identify an other and... And exploit them. That's capitalism for you. Oh, they're scared to go out, even though they were just out robbing the non-union sweatshop. But we can't go out! We'll get captured! But they're scared to go out, so they have to get disguises on, and they have trench coats and sunglasses, and they still look like really gross fucking babies. Check it out! Oh, faithful! <laughs> Grow up! It's not even like the... Two kids on each other's shoulders in one trench coat being one person so that, like, that disguise would have made sense. And it would have been probably more entertaining. Gee, I thought it was funny. I love these scenes. They're so fucking stupid. Something wild happens and there's always a drunk and he's got a bottle. In the best cases, it's got three X's on it, the bottle. But there's always a bottle or a flask 
and the drunk sees whatever wild thing there is. <laughs> Take off, Wendy. Okay. How you doing, dude? In this case, it's a bunch of garbage pail kids, and his drinking must be must be really bad if he's seeing these garbage pail kids. The movies, and they're really shitty moviegoers, and I feel like everybody else in that theater deserves a refund because of their antics. Foul Phil even kisses some lady. And they keep stealing people's hot dogs. That happens like four times in this. This dog's got my name on it. Chill out, dude. <laughs> and some of them are walking up to a biker bar, and we know biker bars in the 80s are really scary places full of really tough guys. I gotta check this thing out. I'm wondering if we're gonna get the scene where all the motorcycles get toppled over like a bunch of dominoes. <laughs> So we'll see, we'll, we'll look for that. Alligator starts trying to bite somebody's toes. Uh, it's toe time. And it ruins their their whole disguise. And for some reason, the bikers strip him down to just the clothes that he normally wears. So I don't know how they knew when to stop. So there's a full on bar fight going on in this biker bar and... <laughs> Crashes through the window. And then we get a fart. Uh, some dude stops the fight and he's like, Hold it! Hold it! Little sucker's got guts! He's with me! Yeah! So they don't they don't want to fight him anymore. So just fight a biker, and that's all you have to do. Because you got guts if you fight them. So then wouldn't everybody who they fight have guts? <sighs> Violence logic doesn't make sense. I want something to go with toes, please. Hey. Drinks for everybody! Yeah. Yeah. These kids are drinking, which is really, really dangerous. Kids don't drink. They're on their way back to the antique shop, and... Greaser Greg parks the ATV behind the dumpster, the atomic dumpster. The street toughs see him, and now they know that there's these weird, gross kids about. Captain Manzini's reading really black magic, and he's trying different spells to get the garbage pail kids back in their trash can. Warts upon a dragon's tail. Send the kids back in the pail. Manzini makes alligator take an oath to never bite toes anymore and and you take the word of a talking alligator so then we start learning about the state home for the ugly state home for the ugly is apparently this place that's run by the state they go out and if they see something ugly they they catch it and take it back to their prison in the state home for the ugly i can't believe people would make a place like that because ugly things can't exist because kids are not one of those four things that we care about in the 80s cocaine money how we look and product placement there are these kids out playing in the street and a net goes over one of them and it's this like dog catcher looking situation goes on and oh Oh, it's just a regular girl, not a not an actual ugly girl. We shouldn't wear a mask unless it's Halloween, kid. Or we get a montage of uh, Dodger and Tangerine. For the chance to belong to you. For to make your dreams. Takes the shirt right off of her back and sells it. So she's really happy because she's getting the money. So, you gonna make a lot more of those things for me? She gives him a kiss on the cheek, which... I got big plans for us. Acts in a way that it's sexual. It's a, it's a sexual reaction in this PG movie in 1987. And we see Juice, leader of the Street Tufts and Tangerine's boyfriend, her controlling, territorial, jealous boyfriend. He sees that Dodger get a kiss on the cheek, and we think he's gonna be real... It's gonna be real bad for Dodger. But really, we see Juice counting money. It feels lousy. Abandoning my principles for money. Principles? Yeah. Letting the little creep live. Tangerine finds out about the garbage pail kids and sees that they're the ones who've been making the clothes. Ugly things? Yuck! Yeah. Stop it, ugly. Yeah. Give me 
him a chance. He'll like them. They made all the clothes you're so crazy about. She's really rude about it, and she says, They made the clothes. Allie says, yeah. You bit your toes, we did. Allie, no! Now we can really start exploiting these ugly kids. Tangerine is gonna have a fashion show. She already knows that there's gonna be a fashion show for these clothes that she's gonna say she made. There's something really weird going on with Greaser Greg and, and Messy Tessie. But I haven't finished the examination. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> they come out of a thing and they make a joke about an examination being over and it's, 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 it's gross. And then we get a fart. The garbage pail kids are getting upset now. They're like, hey, you're getting all this from us and what are we getting from you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, if you don't help us find our way into that... State home for the ugly? Well, guess what? You pink out on us? I wouldn't want to be your toes. Tangerine tells Valerie that models have to be pretty. Need any more models? I'd be glad to help. Valerie, models have to be pretty. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, pretty tall. So Tangerine basically promises dodger sex if he goes hey, along with really exploiting the garbage pail kids some more. Dodger, baby, you're gonna look so cool tonight. Why, I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to resist you. Later. She doesn't want them to go to the to the mall to ruin the fashion show and take credit for making these clothes with messy Tessie's boogers all over them. So she locks them in the basement with a padlock. And she keeps the key down in her boob, down in her bra. Where's the key? And draws attention to it. Or you won't miss it. Really starts turning up the sexual manipulation on this kid. Hey, that's no fair, Ali. Hey, uh, uh, uh. Get a fart. I better break up the tension around here. <laughs> oh, shit. The street toughs are in the antique shop and... Why don't you come back in the morning? And they're unlocking the basement. What are they gonna fucking do? Oh. Kidnap all of the garbage pail kids. All of them. Apparently there are bounties for ugly people. So if you see an ugly person, you can catch them and take them into the to the state home for the ugly and get a reward. Here's your bounty money, fella. You find any more little uglies, you know where to bring them. Kind of the way some counties give you a reward if you shoot a coyote and bring in the ear or something. We do get a little bit of a peek inside the state home for the ugly, and we see some of the other prisoners that are there. We see too old, and it's just some old guy. We see too bald, and it's it's like some... He looks like a monk. The old guy wasn't even that old. And this guy's just... I mean, he shaves his head. I don't know. He's an airbender. And then they ha one guy is too weird because they're wearing a tutu and a t-shirt with a bra over the top, so he's weird. Oh, they even had a too skinny and it's Abraham Lincoln. Too fat and it's Santa Claus. And then too crippled. I, I don't really know what that was. I think it was, that's pretty fucked up. Good, good, uh, good punchline there, 80s movie. And so, like, they're kids, and we see their sign. It's too gross, obviously. These kids are, like, wailing in desperation and... <laughs> torment. They're sad. They're, I mean, they're sad kids. They're crying. They're crying. You want us to shut them up? And then the other guy says, no, you don't have to abuse them right now. Pretty soon, we're going to kill them by putting them in a trash truck and it's gonna squish them. And that's, that's how they do ugly people there. Tangerines, clothes to wear when one simply doesn't know what to wear to occasions in which it doesn't matter what one wears. So then the fashion lady person introduces Tangerine and says some shit and Tangerine gives her description of her clothes. A little flashy, a little trashy, and a little fun. They're a little flashy, a little trashy. But fun. Bikers to the rescue. Good thing that we had those bikers at the beginning of the movie. Chekhov's bikers, if you will. The guys are in trouble! Come on, come on, come on. So they show up. That You make friends with bikers in the beginning of the movie. They're gonna show up at the end of the movie to help you out. 
So they've got ropes tied to the bars on the windows and to their bikes, and they're and they tear them off, and they help and they help rescue the garbage pail kid. Then the bikers and Captain Manzini go in and they start fighting the people inside the state home for the ugly. I'll get over <laughs> All right, Wendy. We get a fart. Bros. So then we find out that there's no use looking for the rest of the garbage pail kids because we know that they've all been put into a trash truck and smushed. Right. Captain, what about all the other children? Yes. Remember the garbage truck? We were too late. Yeah, it's just like a passing line. Nobody even cares about it after that. Oh, we're going to the fashion show and squeezing some juice. Yeah. Captain, we're tired of being losers. Because of that, there are five things that we cared about in the 80s. It's cocaine, money, product placement, uh, looking good, and... What was the other fucking thing? Um... And not being a loser. Those are the five things we cared about in the 80s. Just those five. <laughs> For some reason, one of the guards runs out with his pants around his ankles. I, we didn't see him on the toilet or anything. As soon as the stuff gets over the border, get it to the warehouse. I guess we're supposed to think that he's an international drug smuggler or something. I don't know. It seems silly. It seems like such a, a kid wrote this phone call that a bad guy's having. If a kid writes a phone call that a bad guy's having, it's what Juice says in this phone call. So the kids jump out of the clothes and they just start going hog wild, doing whatever they want. In this PG movie in 1987, a long fart. <laughs> Dodger's finally gonna get his one-on-one -on -one moment with Juice. So they just take turns jumping on each other. That's, that's how they fight. They just take turns jumping on each other. Dodger gets some help with a flip attack and he does one of those thingies where he steps on somebody's hand and then he, he does a full on flip. Since he finally landed on Juice, he's just going nuts, punching him. Come on Dodger, the old one, two, six, five, yeah! <laughs> And then it goes, it turns into one of those Christmas story situations, you know, where Ralphie's had it, had it too much with the bully and he just beats the shit out of him until he cries. He cries, not the bully. Roger. They're back at the antique shop and Tangerine looks at the kid and says, I'm sorry. And she looks sorry. Look, maybe we can just be friends. Maybe we can just do fun things together. No, thank you. I don't think you're pretty anymore. She wasn't asking you to fuck, dude. She wasn't saying, hey, wanna make out? You don't have to think she's pretty. You don't have to hang out with her because she was a total bitch too and like tried to enslave the garbage pail kids. However, when I play the piece backwards, you will be drawn irresistibly back into the garbage pail. So Manzini has it all figured out. He's just got to play the original spell, but backwards because in the 70s, the parents learned that the heavy metal music was giving kids satanic messages when they played it backwards. So by then it became a pop culture thing in the 80s, so it was just a joke. And here we are playing a song backwards. Dodger, this is no time for sentimentality. I shall miss them too. But think how peaceful it will be. Yeah. You're nearly there. He's got his eyes closed because he has so much faith that this is going to work. And Dodger tries to point it out to him, but... He says, no, no, you gotta trust it, trust it. The garbage pail kids, they're not gonna go into that trash can, they don't want to, that pail is jail. So they moonwalk out of the antique shop and head out on their way. Is he just gonna keep that garbage can, an empty garbage can, forever? What happens if he, when he like finds more garbage pail kids and wants to show them, it's like, hey, garbage pail kids, I found your other garbage pail kids. Well, now he, do he can't, because he's his trash can's empty. Nice. 
Nice, Garbage Pail Kids. Nice. So now there are Garbage Pail Kids out in the wild. Out there, they're an invasive species. We already know they're destructive. They've they've caused them uh, so much chaos out there. So I'm, I'm really sad that nobody cared about the other Garbage Pail Kids, the ones who got smushed off screen. I did not like this movie. It's a really bad movie. The story is lame, pieced together. Um, I think one of the writers that's listed is one of the creators of the Garbage Pail Kids. But uh, Garbage Pail Kids should have stayed on cards, not in the movies. I remember collecting these cards fondly. I'm going to talk about it a lot more on an upcoming video where I talk about all of the things that I collected as a kid. So watch out for that video. And um, I'm Johnny B, and that's been Garbage Pail Kids over there, apparently, where I pointed. Uh, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe thing, maybe right here there should be a, a comment that you do, say a thing, it's like, hey, I didn't really, I didn't mind the Garbage Pail Kids, I thought they were, they were cute. You're wrong, they're gross. <sighs> so, um, see you next time, I'm, I'm Johnny B, did you like the video yet? How about comment, did, did you comment yet? How about subscribe did did you subscribe yet